on this episode of Live to Farm. It's harvest time! Woo! I mean, yeah. a lot of money tied up in it. and Dive into this cornfield here, open it up. Farms. It's harvest time! Woo! When they're ready to be picked, we have cutters that come and they'll just cut off the ripe melons and, and then we have people, will drive the buses down these roadways and then they just, will toss them to a guy in the bus and they just fill up the buses as they go with the cut watermelon. That's about it. That's what goes on out here. A lot of growing, a cutting and picking. <laughs> we pick around late July. It's been so hot this year that we started picking mid-July, which decided to get started early. So we'll go probably till the end of September. I would say mid-September, then straight on to grain harvest. So produce keeps us busy in the summer. Brandon does basically everything with the watermelon. Brandon does all the spraying. He got his little prescriptions for each field and what he knows is best for disease and pests. So pest control. Our kids like to get involved. They come out and help him sometimes. They're just a little bit too little yet to really do much else. We kind of have our way of doing things and too many kids is kind of gets in the way sometimes and it's not safe. <laughs> so they are good at eating the watermelon. Even our dog loves watermelon. After we have a full melon bus, they will go back to the shed and get in line and then we'll unpack them. So we'll go over to the shed right now and we'll show you how that's done. wagon people for a long time, but we switched the buses because it was just easier on our equipment. And we had some fields that were for farther away than usual. And the buses is the only way to go. You can't use wagons for that far away. So they've worked out really well, I think. I don't have to work on them. So of course I think they work out well. Brandon's so like OCD and like meticulous that he had to have all the buses painted the same color. We had to have the decals on them and everything. I think we got 11 or 12 buses. Yeah, you just have to tear them all apart, paint it all of them, and we take out the windows and we cover them with protector so we don't bruise our fruit. Nobody wants bruised melons. Yeah, we have one person that picks up the ripe melons and one of them will catch it in the bus and they'll just keep on going through the field and fill her up. But yes, the buses come in out of the field, loaded. We bring them up here to this driveway and then they we just work our way forward to the line. We pull our loaded buses from the field up and this is where we unload our uh, buses at. As you can tell, the platform's higher here, so they don't have to bend over as bad. This pile is accumulating because our spreader truck that we uh, usually dump like our coals in is being dumped right now. This one has like a crack in it. Sometimes they just, like I said, you tap it and it doesn't feel right. That one looks okay. I mean, obviously I would probably eat it. You know, grocery stores, they're kind of, they're kind of picky. So a lot of times you get what they call hollow heart. When you crack it open, there's like a little cut in the middle of the part. Brandon designed this system, the place out of Texas made it for him. We've used it for a few years and he added on last year the, seed, the seated part. He did all the fab work and stuff. It's pretty cool. And then this, there's a little computer in here that records every single weight. So at the end of the day, he'll have like his total pounds. And then he kind of like, again, he's like a numbers guy. So he knows what variety comes out of what field and he knows what, how many pounds he'll get off that variety, how many pounds he'll get off that field, how many pounds we got for the day, all about the data. They're checking for rejects, checking for calls. This guy's got a lot built up. He's putting them in the spreader. When this spreader gets full, we're gonna take her down to the bottoms and give it back to the land. Either have like markings on them that wouldn't pass, or when they did the tap test, it didn't feel good to him. He's getting rid of all of them right now. 
will stop by and they'll ask for the coals. So yeah, they're fine. We'd rather sell these, but we'll give them back to the earth too. So these guys are good to go. They've been tapped, they've been mangled, they've been handled a lot and they're headed down and then they'll get put into their size category at this point. So he's just pushing them along. His job is to just make sure they're going down the right way on the, on the line. So then they'll get boxed over in their specific box and then we'll head on to the shipping shed. <laughs> The shipping shed. We put them in their sections. Brian over here picks them up off the forklift, puts them on the designated truck. We have two dock. We have a scale over here. Brandon weighs every stack before they go on a truck, so we make sure that we don't overload a truck. Produce is it's a time-consuming, mental health-consuming uh, type of business, but it's usually very profitable. Produce, uh, you know, watermelons. It's, we've always done pretty good with watermelons. So chances are, if you went to an Aldi, you probably ate one of our watermelons. That's our biggest like relationship. in the game you have been loaded your trailer has been checked and you're ready to go so you come here and get checked out by me you sign in your paperwork and we send you on your way after covid hit this is what we went to to kind of protect ourselves and our crew truck drivers don't really go in the facility they just stand out here and get their paperwork if it hits the store in late july then we might get payment like in a month or something maybe the last of our payments come like before Christmas. So yeah, we'll go right into grain harvest right after this. And then it'll be Thanksgiving and Christmas and then we're buying seed for our next season of watermelons. That's <laughs> life. So thanks for buying Cardinal Farms watermelon. Uh, our family appreciates you. We work hard out here. Feel like we have a great product, so thank you. everyone. Got a special guest here, Joe Dedman with Monty's. So Joe is a living legend. He is called the Corn Whisperer because he is a wealth of knowledge. Not just corn, but all the other crops that are that we grow here. But we, we basically focus, or I focus more on corn. So, you know, we have a lot of tough questions that we can't answer. We normally give Joe a call and he kind of got that nickname, the, the Corn Whisperer. Joe, you want to grab a ear? I don't normally on our farm get too caught up with the number of rows around or the, the length of it, especially on these hybrids. Some hybrids will naturally be normally throw like 16 rows around or some hybrids in the genetics will throw 20 rows around. What we're more shooting for, if it naturally normally throws 16 rows around, we get more excited when we can get it to throw 18 rows around. Normally it throws a 20 rows around if you can get it to throw 22 or 24 rows around. But Bottom line is we get paid by the weight, so we try to maximize all the, the to get the heaviest weight we can on the kernel. This plant is a, a factory. It's plant, it turns sunlight and nutrients in the soil into this ear that produces the yield for him, which in turn either feeds livestock, cattle, turkeys, pigs, hogs, whatever. It also feeds the world. Most of the food that you eat in the grocery stores is made from corn. Some people say we don't need farmers because we we'll just go to the grocery store. The food has to be made with something and 90, 95% of the stuff is either made from corn, soybeans, wheat. So farmers make a lot of your food actually. He only planted one kernel for every stalk that you see. And then we get this kind of return off of one kernel. And this is why the entire network of farming and him and Brooks do so much to grow these crops because the more ear, the bigger the ear he can have, the more yield he can come out with and therefore brings him income as well as feeds the world. I mean, we, our population is growing throughout the world. They've challenged American farmers by 2050 to grow 300 bushel of yeah, average. 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 Average per right acre. And here. I think we're at a national average on corns around 180 bushel per yeah. acre. So we got a long ways to go and we have to really figure out how can we get there? How can we produce more and more corn for even you, you know, sitting at home and you're thinking, wow, how in the world does the 
farmer go out here and do all of that, it's not easy. Even in your garden at home, like you got your sweet corn, your green beans, you want the most yield you can get too. So you, you kind of monitor it, you kind of feed it, you know, different things and build the compost in your garden. That's the same kind of approach that, that farmers are taking out here to do that as well. Just on a little bit bigger scale. Yeah, bigger, much, much, <laughs> much bigger scale, yeah. Yeah, your garden might be what? Not even a quarter of an acre, yeah. but you're, you're dealing with thousands yeah. of acres, yeah. It takes a lot of logistics and a lot of planning to do all of that yeah, each and every season. And every season is different. I've been farming, you know, my whole life. Been on my own farming for almost 30 years there. And I can really say, I don't think we've ever had the same year ever. We're always different weather, heat at different time, rainfall events, not enough rain, too much rain, diseases come in. Farmers across the world there, you know, they, they deal with a lot of stress. I mean, yeah. a lot of money tied up in it. And so I've known Joe, I don't know, for a long, long time I've known you, but been really been using a lot of the Monty products for the last three, four years, pretty heavy. When you can run something more natural, like a humic and, and sugar, you know, you're feeding the biology, it's doing the heavy work of what the commercial fertilizers were doing. So, you know, that's what we want. Healthy environment, grow more corn, more soybeans on less input, commercial synthetic input. So gardeners around the country are seeing the same kind of a performance from Monty's products with our organic carbon and our plant food, which is safe to use around pets and children. As all the award-winning farmers across the country, we're out here on Kevin's farm, high producer, and he uses these same products. Yeah, same things. Identical is what we use. Yeah. Welcome to Cardinal Farms. This is Judd Cardinal, I'm Chelsea. We're gonna show you how to, a fancy way to cut the watermelon, and then we'll show you the not so fancy way. We just heard about this off of TikTok. And the first way, make your cut. Watch out, Judd. I'm not taking anybody to the ER tonight. <laughs> Judd is the taste tester on the farm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Quality control. First, we're gonna cut this even strips. Try not to hurt yourself. As a family, we've been harvesting watermelon for around 20 years. I think annually we sell about 2 million a year. And we'll do it this way. Frank, you gotta wait your turn. <laughs> I love hearing where our melons go. It's nice to like get feedback, obviously, in any anything you do. Honestly, us spoiled watermelon farmers, we really don't care for cutting and holding of the rind or the fancy way of doing it. When I was a kid, we did this on the back of a wagon and it was not a cold watermelon. It was definitely uh, hot or room temperature, but you were just like so hungry from working out in the fields, but you just cut it down the center like this. This is how all of us eat it. You just get that heart out. So there's the heart and look, he's already wanting it. The heart is usually like the sweetest part. We just usually swoop it out like that and all grab a piece. I mean, honestly. And this has been Watermelon Cutting with Chelsea at Cardinal Farms. Thank you. Welcome to Cardinal Farms. It's harvest time, 1st October here. And I'm here with uh, good friend Joe Deadman with Monty's. We're out looking at this corn that we're harvesting. It's been a long road to get to this point. This is usually, or we hope for the most rewarding part, see how all our hard work's paid off. Kind of a roller coaster of a year to say the least. Boy, it has. And to have the yields that we got, we're, we're very blessed and very thankful. Um, harvest is one of the most important times of the year for all farmers. They look and see all the products that they used and that's that's what farmers are doing all over the country. It's all about getting to a higher yield and ROI, we call it, return on your investment. Great to have partners with Joe and Monty's helping us with these new products. We're always working with the farmer. The farmer works with us. It's a partnership that we go about each and every season trying to, to work with them to get to the higher yield. This is a 64790 Aggregate Hybrid. The moisture is 17%, uh, Brandon just told me. To have this kind of health at 17 mm -hmm. to 18% moisture is, is huge. 
and plant health where you get yield. So folks at home, <clears throat> this is what Brooks has to deal with every season. This, the reason this ear is so small, the plant came up lighter than any of the rest of them. And of course you can see, this is not going to yield anything like this. It's always changing. He never ever, I don't think you've ever had two identical years in a row. Never. And so that's what we do. We, we look at it all over, we study it, we decide what nutrients that he needed that he didn't get in the plant this year. He may have put them on, but he didn't get them in. And then what can we do to get it in the plant next year to get to those higher yields? I appreciate your guys' help. Look forward to taking this data at the end of the year and working for next year. Another busy day out here on Cardinal Farms. Let's get to it. We'll see you guys later. This moisture is 21. The spot we were at the field a while ago was showing 17 to 18, he said. Here at 21%, we're at 60 pound test weight. So when, when you dry that down to the 15%, you know, that's gonna pick up even more test weight. At the end of the day, we, we want weight. That's what we sell. Now we'll dump it out. Here we're at the grain dryer, and this is where all our corn comes in to dry. After it dries, it goes into our storage bins over here. But it, it starts down here in our pit, and all this thin here does is it stores it until the dryer's got capacity, and then it'll take it into the dryer. Let me show you. He's dragging this dryer. See, it's taking corn from both sides. This is a screen dryer. There's only corn on the outside column, blowing air. Got a burner up front, and it's blowing that heated air, and it comes out the screen. That corn is just slowly moving down until it hits the drag at the bottom. That's how we dry corn. Appreciate you guys checking out the grain setup and uh, spending a little time here harvesting. We'll catch you later on. <laughs> We struggle with high magnesium down here. With the high magnesium, this this ground gets hard. You've seen the little ear with Joe that he was describing and late emergers. And the best thing for that is you gotta work on emergence. And what I've found down here that works well is the soil warrior. And we've been using the soil warrior for the last three years. It's something we're gonna continue using. Like running it in the fall, after that, it's ready for plant time in the spring. So it gives us a better emergence, works well. cutting a few beans today and then switch over and shell some corn this afternoon. This combine's pretty comfortable and nice. I can't imagine Kevin and them guys, I'm not for sure if they even run a combine with a cab on it yet or not. That red one might be a little hot and itchy in his ride, I'm not sure, but he's catching some sun, I'd say, in, in his red machine. This is my happy place right here. This is, this is what I look forward to every year. Not too bad of a job at all. Copperhead concaves really do a better job of separating the seed from the plant, give me a lot cleaner sample. There's the plant after it matures and all your leaves fall off of it. You're just left with the main plant and the clean bean. This done, and then I'll come back and take my head off and go get the corn head. Switch over to combine. Just put on our new Drago GT corn head. Real happy with it so far. Let me show you a little bit of how this works. You put this down to the ground and come up to your row of corn. Comes in here, and these are called gathering chains. They'll grab the stalk and kind of pull it in there. Once the stalk gets in here, these are called your uh, snapping rollers. They twist down. It'll grab that stalk and pull it down. The ear will hit the deck plates here and pop off and the chains carry it in onto an auger and an auger will bring it in to the center of the head into the feeder house of your combine. Once the stock gets pulled down, we'll run into these blades and get chopped up into finer pieces. Getting ready to dive into this cornfield here, open it up, see what we got. Better be good or Brooks' fault if not. So right there is where the field was flooded and where the boys were getting pulled on the tube. I remember when I was younger, they always said Brooks was going to be a farmer from day one. And Before I was a teenager and stuff, I didn't have much to do with the farm. And they always said I was going to do something else. But as I got older, after high school, went to college at Bragg and what I knew and what I like to do and the challenge of it now. Every year is different and always wanting to have that higher yield and do better and be the best we can be. I'm out here at Cardinal Farms hauling corn back from the field to the grain bins. All the older guys, they don't want to run this because we ain't got no air conditioning. We just got the fresh air, so they make me run it. It ain't that bad, though. 
looking real good. It's a lot drier than I thought, and it's pretty decent corn. When I take the last pass and you turn, it feels like you've done something today now when you see this. But then you look that way, long way to go there. We've been out here tonight shelling corn and we didn't get started too long ago. So we're gonna have a late night to try to catch our dryer so we can have it drying all night and we can start back up early in the morning. So we're gonna get after it. Time's going down, but it's another great day here at Cardinal Farms. Have a good one. Very